Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Now I cannot tell you how busy Glenn and I have been with our daily lives as well as the channel but we really appreciate everyone who comments and generally interacts. Now the dream is to eventually go part time sometime in the future and anyone that's a patron it really does make a difference to our ability to potentially do that in the future. Riot Civil Unrest was a game I had my eye on since it was first announced. It's influenced by actual riots that took place in Italy in which the developer found themselves caught up. An interesting concept for a game but does it fight the good fight, or is it fighting a losing battle? Let's find out. The core gameplay revolves around control of either a group of protesters or law enforcement. You control them directly using the left stick to try and wrestle them to where you want them to be. This is easier said than done with both protesters and law enforcement having a real mind of their own. For example, you might drag a group to just the right position only for the opposing team to approach and begin pelting you with projectiles, sending your forces in all directions. Despite being a realistic representation of the scenario, it can feel incredibly frustrating as you struggle to maintain some semblance of order. If you feel things are escalating and you want to up the ante, you can order your individual groups to enter aggressive mode where they'll start to throw their own projectiles and heckle but I found it difficult to do this quickly enough and cycling through the different units under your control was both cumbersome and often very difficult in the midst of action. At the top of the screen, the current feeling amongst the groups is shown. This ranges from a peaceful protest, which is the ideal, to a more violent and even deadly mood. The real gameplay here comes from trying to achieve a goal, while doing so as peacefully as possible, which can be very challenging. These can be things like just holding an area or stopping your tents being destroyed, and I felt like the idea behind the game was a little superior to its execution. Some levels had me try and block a point with my troops, where I placed them in the entrance, and set them in a tight square formation with the press of a d-pad direction and then waited for the inevitable protesters to attempt to breach my defences. Only... um... they didn't. They did nothing. They watched as I stood guard, and I stood guard watching as they watched me for about five minutes until the level was won. Now I understand that this randomness is exactly like real life, and when the crowd did turn, events escalated fast and are much more entertaining from a gameplay standpoint, but I found it was as frustrating as it was fun to control. Thankfully, you do have several power-ups to support this, such as boosting morale with a cheer or, when playing as the protesters, sitting down on the ground. Yeah, I know. Hell of a power-up, eh? These are very powerful and you even unlock heroic members to join your cause. These may offer some morale boost to the entire protest or vice versa some control to your forces. There is an upgrade mechanic of sorts at play here as well. As you achieve more victories you gain funds with which to purchase your officers upgraded gear. But with no real indication if any of these actually make improvements you are left scratching your head as to the impact of any of these. Things like radios to bring your forces back under control and improve your discipline do just that and require a cooldown before you can use them again, but again their implementation just never felt quite right. I personally would have liked a more command and conquer style control scheme, where troops had a chance to waver or flee but would predominantly follow my orders. That's not the case at all in Riot and when you add this to the fact that there is some seriously tedious mission design, i.e. hold this point, go to X and hold that point, stop protesters from getting to X, stop police from breaking your tents, it just does not amount to a fun experience in the long run, which is a real shame as I was really excited for this one. It's by no means a bad game, there are times when everything works so well, but these are few and far between. Another huge omission is the lack of any type of tutorial. Seriously, you're dropped into the game and just left to get on with it. No explanation for how to control your groups, no direction on what to use where. There is, seriously, nothing. It feels half finished in that regard. Gameplay is at times rewarding, but mainly a frustrating reminder of how important it is to gradually teach the player the game. While controls are a mess, an unresponsive and sometimes plain annoying system that seems to have a mind of its own. Gameplay scores 8 out of 20 and controls 4 out of 20.
Visually, the game looks great. Yes, I know it's not high-res 3D, but it has a very unique take on the visual palette I'd usually associate with a real-time strategy game of old. It was this that first drew me to it, very Command & Conquer 1. Yes, I'm that old. The animations are intentionally jerky and I found them to be in keeping with the aesthetic choices made throughout the game. Unfortunately, the variety and size of the maps is tiny. You will literally be on a single screen, usually holding one area, with little in the way of environmental goings on. No traffic or pedestrians running haplessly. No real feeling that this is a living, breathing city, just a static backdrop, albeit a pretty one at times. Sounds are decent enough, with the mood of people being quite evident from the volume and gestures on screen. Music is essentially non-existent for the most part, although this didn't really deter me. After all, it would have been a little bit odd to have some drum and bass while this subject matter's going on on screen. It was the lack of environmental sounds though that along with the lifeless environments detracted me from the overall experience. Visuals though I liked and they scored 13 out of 20, while the audio is just okay but nothing overly special, it scores 11 out of 20. The game retails at £12.79 or €16.99 or $16.99 and I believe it is actually on sale here in the UK. For some the game's gonna click and for others like myself it just doesn't. This doesn't deter from the fact that it offers a decent amount of content though, with story modes for both factions and then a missions mode allowing you to work your way through several scenarios and riots. There is a multiplayer option allowing players to control the factions locally and play against each other, but I'll be honest I didn't even get to try that out. Overall, value scores 12 out of 20. Despite being very excited about this one, I came away disappointed. From the initial lack of a tutorial causing me untold confusion and then forcing myself to persist for the review and learn the game only to experience a game that amounted to spamming some buttons with a picture of a radio and then choosing troops to line up. It could have been great, but this did not end peacefully. It scores a switch up score of 48%. Thanks so much to everyone that comments on the channel. Remember, we give away a free Nintendo Switch game every month at least. Let's be honest, we give away way more than that. Thank you, as always, for all things Switch all the time. Keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!